Good morning and welcome to Harden Life Live. We are the Hardens and we are a family of coaches and counselors and we love taking this 10 minutes every Monday morning hopefully to give you some tips on how to live your best life. And I'm assuming that a lot of you like us are sort of starting the new direction. We're trying to get our grip going and hitting into 221 with a um, resolution to get our act together, whatever our act is. Yeah. Uh, but I know that this is about the time we're already starting to hit voices of resistance in our head. And Abigail, I'm assuming that is why you wrote on it. Yes, and so I did write on the outer critic um, like a little over a month ago and just realizing that that's one of the voices of resistance where we're already looking to almost dismantle anyone from looking at ourselves by discrediting them and mm -hmm. maybe seeking their flaws. However, the other voice of resistance is you're not on your team and you have your inner critic. Mm -hmm. And so the inner critic is actually um, hard to detect because we can mistake it for our own voice or our own self-criticism. Um, you can hear people say a lot of the times, I'm just hard on myself. I'm just really hard on myself. I'm like, well, I think it's good to really differentiate it's not you being hard on yourself it is your inner critic which is not you it's actually a voice that needs to be put in its right place mm -hmm. so i mean we all teach a workshop called hardwired to heal mm -hmm. which really addresses even deeper work into the inner critic so i mean audrey i want to hear from you oh, tell me okay. some of the traits of the inner critic so you mm -hmm. can start to detect if that's actually your voice or the inner critic well, I think it has a lot to do with shame, yeah. uh, you know, differentiating shame from guilt. Guilt is I did something bad. I can own that really quickly and move forward. Shame is I am bad. The inner critic makes you the problem versus the outer critic can make everyone else the problem. Uh, the inner critic makes you the problem, and it thinks that if it can fix you, then you'll get the love that you need or you'll get the acceptance you desire uh, and life will work out for you. So just fix me. But the sad thing is, the inner critic is never pleased. <laughs> and so really, it's just the taskmaster saying, do more, fix yourself more. Like, you should have done this. It, it shoulds on you all the time. And it really will never, like, that's the thing is that you're not going to satisfy it ever. Like and that's what keeps Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all you perfectionists out there, it's mm -hmm. not you, it's your inner critic. It's like a, <laughs> a, a, an emotional, toxic uh, cancer um, that it's in you, but it's not who you are. Uh, it's like something has developed inside of you and is growing inside of you. And that which is not you needs to be alleviated, attacked, mm -hmm. and identified. Mm -hmm. I think, it, and you've got to start... Uh, the only way, you know, uh, Scripture says that you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. You've got to bring truth into your innermost part. And sadly, the inner critic is warped on its view of truth. Yep. And it truly actually believes if you simply get your act together, lose that 20 pounds, you know, quit drinking so much, you would get the life you want. And yet, you find yourself in a cycle of defeat. Mm -hmm. with the inner critic standard and then it's voice of criticism and you're never meeting up yeah that's yeah. why we have to be so careful especially around this time of year if we are trying to reach goals that could be good for us it is good to lose weight and be healthier i know with the holidays it's like we don't want to keep that weight on <laughs> and our bodies do suffer from it however the inner critic makes it an attack on your identity mm -hmm. and it, what Audrey was even saying more about that shame piece is shaming you for even eating some holiday food and putting on weight. Or we know with 2020, quarantine weight, and we might still be working on that. Um, and yet, it's what we want to do is have a healthy self-view. It's while we're in process. The inner critic doesn't let you just eat in process. It's very all or nothing, mm -hmm. black and white. You're either good or you're bad. And usually, you're always going to be bad. And that's what fuels the inner critic. Mm -hmm. So there really is no way to balance it. And so that's why we want to make sure that 
you're starting to become on your team and not listening to the inner critic's voice mm-hmm. while you're trying to actually achieve something, make progress in something, it can defeat you before you already begin. And that's why having good, healthy relationships is so critical. Mm-hmm. Uh, a counselor, uh, a friend, uh, a coach, someone who can hear that inner critic inside of you, help you identify that voice and then begin to attack it uh, with healthy, uh, Mm truth-based feedback. Absolutely Mm -hmm. critical. You cannot self-generate an accurate view of yourself uh, while fighting uh, the inner critic by yourself. Mm -hmm. Well, Scripture says that the heart is deceitful. So we can't trust a lot of times our own self-evaluation because we're skewed. We can't be objective about ourselves when we live in these skin here. Yeah, I'll never forget when, when I was in my counseling program, and we have to do a lot of counseling each other as students, and, and I remember sitting in my supervisor's office and just crying at what a horrible counselor I was. And, and just listing all the reasons why I shouldn't be a counselor. And I'll never forget uh, a fellow student said, wow, that's a really harsh voice. And, and, and it took him saying that to me to even see that it was harsh. Because uh, for me, it was so familiar. Mm-hmm. And it was inaccurate. And it was inaccurate. <laughs> and that's why it's so important for us to get out loud about what those voices are saying so that they can be called out, so that the, the people around us who love us, who who have a more accurate view of us, can call it out. And that is so in- like good to invite trustworthy, safe people into the experience. What I even do with my clients is, here is your lie statement, here is your truth statement, to mm-hmm. counter the lie. Mm-hmm. And I know that Mommy wrote on mm-hmm. a lie and a vow. Sometimes it could be even a vow that we make that we've got to prove ourselves in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And so this is even taking it a step level so you can differentiate that voice Mm -hmm. over yours and cling to scripture, cling to that true identity of who the Lord says that you are, not based on what you do. Mm -hmm. He loved us while we were yet sinners, meaning Mm -hmm. it's not this like, even I think our inner critic can warp how we see our relationship with the Lord, how it is with others. Sometimes we just keep living in shame. And that's not living a free life. That's not living our best life. That's actually not living our life. It's living in the shadow of the inner critic. Wow. Well, I think, you know, summing that up, when we're trying to move forward now and do our goals and live, if we have that voice of condemnation, We're going to have another year at the end of this year going, it was a wash. I missed it. And I love the passage in Romans says that there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. If your goals are condemning you, pause and realize you've got the inner critic. This isn't what God would have you do. Mm -hmm. But what he would have you for you is what scripture says. It was for freedom that Christ set you free. This year, have a goal of living internally free of these voices, these uh, maladaptive ways that we carry out trying to perfect ourselves Mm -hmm. and determine that you're going to find the freedom that he purchased for you by looking first at his truth. Absolutely. Well, we want to direct you. Abigail did a phenomenal job, as she did on the outer critic, on this inner critic. You start silencing these voices, you're going to live strong. So check our website, www.hardinlight.com. Read our blogs, look at our workshops, and we've got some free downloads. Absolutely. So until next week, we'll look forward. Have a great week. Have a great week, guys. Thanks for joining us.